Uh, good morning, everyone. And thank you for uh, making your time early this morning for this webinar. We were we actually were planning to host this uh, early part of the ECQ, but uh, just like you and the rest of the business community, we were scrambling to find uh, order in the emergence of the remote uh, working from home uh, scenarios in our office. So having in place, uh, we thought of uh, putting in a webinar that uh, counts uh, heavily on security, especially that everybody is working from home. Working from home, sharing data, working from home, collaborating uh, via the internet, and uh, unwittingly sometimes using unsecured platforms. So this morning, we are very, very um, lucky to have partnered with Drive to uh, deliver this security webinar. And I hope that this is going to be very, very beneficial to everybody in the session since we are all uh, securing the environments in our respective organizations. Having said that, good morning. I will turn the floor again to Laylord, and I'll be on the session. If you want to chat, drop me an, drop me a message. You can always do so. And let's all participate. Thank you and good morning. Thank you, Ms. Eileen, for that very warm, warm welcome. So, uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce our speaker. Today's presenter is Paul Villena. He is currently Business Development Manager at RIPE for more than three years now, uh, supporting the sales and the business operations and key business and technology strategy for the APAC working together with local service providers, telecommunications, and software innovators to position the value of hybrid cloud computing business models and proactively and strategically grow revenue, prioritizing time out in the field solution selling to target tier one, tier two partner or customer segments in order to achieve partner recruitment, revenue growth, and customer satisfaction, generating net new cross-sell and upsell opportunities. He also created programs that can help drive cloud profitability, enhance partners' cloud practice, and build new ideas on cloud vendor technologies. That's why we invited him to be uh, the presenter for this session. And prior to RIPE, he had joined Microsoft for about more than seven years and held various roles. As an intern student partner, UQ ambassador, partner technology strategist, and partner learning ambassador. Prior to Microsoft, he held various roles from other institutions and a part-time IT professor at Adamson University, where he is also an alumnus. More on things I've mentioned, you may actually know him better by listening to this presentation and eventually connecting with him on LinkedIn, which I have posted on this slide as well. At this time, I'm going to hand over the floor to Paul. Paul, the floor is yours. Thanks for that, Laylord, for the introduction. So I hope um, everyone is um, okay in the comfort of their home. So I know most of us are working remotely right now. So I'll just um, give the uh, admissions for every newcomers for this um, team's call to Laylord. And um, before we start, let me share our presentation for today. Okay, so um, if you have questions, just let us know on the um, in uh, message box on your Microsoft team. And then later on, um, we have some activities um, prepared by um, Field Data um, in an application that they um, provided earlier, Mentimeter. So today we'll be focusing more on how we realize the new normal in terms of modern workplace. So how we can help you secure 
the environment um, that tackles with the four core concepts. So that drives number one, identity-driven security. Second is your information protection. Third is threat protection. And last is security management. So most of the customers that we're dealing right now asked us for any guidance on how to manage security in this challenging environment. So an architecture that routes all remote traffic back to the corporate network was originally intended to provide some security team with the following actions. Like for example, how do we prevent unauthorized access? How do we help control of authorized user access? Another um, ask is that as an IT, how we can protect um, over the network such as intrusion detection prevention and distributed deni uh, denial of service mitigation. And some of um, the customers are also asking how we can do um, and prevent data loss um, protection or prevention in our organization. Um, as we all know, we are using different applications right now. Some or most of the time are over the cloud. So like, for example, today uh, we're using Microsoft Teams. So um, we have this platform to do and use it for collaboration. So if you want to do events like this, uh, we're using Microsoft Teams right now. So in this presentation, uh, what you want to focus with is the core okay, solution that your Office 365 or any Microsoft customer is using. And with Microsoft, um, the vision right now is how we can help you provide, number one, the right tool to use in, in line with the situation that we're currently facing. Second is how we can help you secure okay, and be productive on this situation as you work from home. So most of the companies right now are dealing with this evolution. So how we can um, remote work uh, with the different challenges from the comfort of our home. So most of the time as we work, the meron tayo mga um, challenges like one, how do we combine the need of our, um, let's say, uh, peers or from our families as you work closely uh, with your um, corporate team. So sometimes when we do chats or webinar sessions on the background, you will um, heard noise from 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 the um, backyard. And some of um, some of us most of the time are asking how we can secure your connections from time to time. So in this session, uh, what I want to um, share it with you is that um, the world has changed right now. So IT can no longer shackle an employee behind a corporate owned desktop or device. So most of us are using multiple devices. Some are managed, some are not. So the profil uh, profil proliferation of mobility and for new tools and technologies, how we can empower workers now using their own devices. And some of the workers has increased okay, actively on online. So most of them are online and using different tools on social media, on messenger platforms, uh, using their corporate tools how do they engage using their um, application, sending data, utilizing artificial intelligence and cloud. So the complexity of threat is now also evolving. So as you can see on the news, the, um, most of the banks are sending emails, text messages about fraud, phishing, and most of the companies right now, and even individuals are facing different threats. So asking their um, credit card number, sending, uh, let's say, links that are not safe via email, via text messages. So in today's world, which is the new normal, even threats are evolving. So targeting bigger organizations, even corporate and medium and small um, businesses. 
So we know that your um, IT environment is also complex during the time that you're, um, let's say, in the comfort of your um, office. And most of the time, okay, what we do is we prevent from over the network and also keeping in touch with managed devices that you provided to your um, users. So today, okay, I also want to share it with you that um, the complexity existing within organizations, we know that um, businesses around the world have a clear priority of keeping all of their information safe and rightfully so. So there are immense security uh, pressures which makes it critical to scale your security and keep up the data. So further, there is an additional catalyst or immediacy driven by the new GDPR requirements. So as you can see here, 90% of the world's data has been created within the last two years. And we're seeing that in this ECQ, we're growing more and more and faster in terms of the data that we've created. And around 600 billion is lost to cybercrime each year. So imagine if we don't act okay, now and give some security practices, best practices okay, to our ed users. And most of the time, okay, um, means and some of our users are using different unmanaged applications. So how we can um, secure them as well. So given the complexity and pressures, so how do organizations respond today? So they typically okay, layer point solution after point solution onto their security. So imagine um, this is complicated and messy. So more specifically, a patchwork approach to security means that often your point solutions don't integrate or talk to one another negatively affecting the end user's experience and, um, to be honest, actually increasing an organization's vulnerability to breach. So this approach is likely overwhelming on some IT departments. So this approach to security very quickly becomes overwhelming to manage. So imagine you have um, over 50 point solutions um, in the office or in the comfort of your data center or other areas as well. So last, this complexity across both end users experience and IT management significantly impedes productivity. So in terms of the ECQ right now, so how we can help our users be productive and also secure is one of the bigger questions. So how do we balance security and productivity? So Another question is how do we eliminate security complexity while also maximizing end users productivity? So um, <clears throat> we recommend fundamentally that you simplify your approach to complex security challenges by building security in your productivity tools. Productivity tools such as let's say you have your Office 365, you also have your let's say Microsoft 365 platform. So how we can help you secure, build security practices across, let's say, number one teams, your email solution platform, your Active Directory over the cloud, okay, and how we can secure and um, have a layer or have a layer of security for your end users. So with Microsoft's approach to built in, not bolted on, security compromises for core tenants. So here we have number one, we will focus on identity and access management. Second is information protection. Third is threat protection. And last is security management. So with Microsoft, in terms of security, over 1 billion okay, per year, Microsoft invests in cybersecurity R&D each year. So let's now talk and take a closer look at each of these tenants. So what they mean to end users as they do their work from anywhere and collaborate. And of course, how actual customers 
are deriving value from them. So each core tenants here, I'll um, share some examples and some companies who already applied uh, their best security practices on security. So let's focus first on identity and access management. So how we help protect your users, identities, and control access to valuable resources. So if you have, let's say, 100 users, 300 users, how we now help protect this um, Office 365 or M365 or Azure users or dynamic users, okay, to any applications that they used outside and um, internally to do communication and collaboration. So with identity and access management, so um, in terms of the current situation, one of the top mind or biggest um, weaknesses from most of the companies are underlying in terms of an identity. So imagine most of us are now re uh, working remotely using our mobile. So how we now protect our users from accessing their data internally okay, and also using their unmanaged devices for some users and for some that are managed devices as well. And even passwords nowadays, most of the users have weak or old passwords. So how we um, help them okay, have an added security layer in terms of accessing your applications from time to time in the comfort of their home. So here I have an example. Okay. So the example I will show you here is more on security anomaly that organizations see with increasing frequency to illustrate what we mean by identity driven security. So I have here Sarah. So Sarah is a remote worker and is based in the US, for example. However, Sarah is simultaneously logged in from a public IP address in Hong Kong. So we know that this is impossible. Sarah is in the US, but in the application that you use, you see as an IT admin that the IP was logged in in Hong Kong. So in fact, we call it impossible travel. And this login from Hong Kong is most likely due to Sarah's credential being stolen and compromised. So thankfully, the IT team in this example takes an approach to their organization's security posture. So they assume that there's a breach. So as a result, they've enabled conditional access, which continuously access or assessed Sarah's profile for risk. So for example, in Microsoft 365, the IT team assess factors like the SARS device meet the organization's compliance policy. Does Sarah have access to this information based on her role and function? Is the platform she's leveraging up to date and approved? Or and is Sarah signing in from a known and unusual location? So to help you with this, what we can do is to determine Sarah's user's risk profile. So here in this example, the IT team knows that Sarah is not someone who travels from work. So the login from Hong Kong must be a breach. So even if Sarah's weak and old, uh, old password makes um, her a target for breach, the IT team can leverage the additional identity-driven safeguards included in your Microsoft 365. So to make it secure that Sarah is actually Sarah when she's logging in. So imagine if you have your Office 365 with you, how we can protect your users that for example, Paul is logging in as Paul, not Paul is logging in on behalf of Paul from another country. So here we can look at different factors and best practices that tackles number one, multi-factor authentication. So before you logging in to let's say your Office 365 to access email, Teams, OneDrive, okay, one of the best practices, okay, or top of mind of new users on Office 365 is to okay, operate and use 
in on multi-factor authentication. So how do we do it? It's very simple. You just go to the admin center okay, and go to your um, <clears throat> admin credentials for um, your users and take a look on multi-factor authentication. What it does is, number one, if I log into office.com, okay, it will require me to either, number one, have the application that gives me how we I uh, how I authenticate my users, whether to copy the PIN or password given by the application. So with Microsoft, we call it Authenticator app. Okay, so it's free for all. So you can actually um, connect not just Office 365, but also your personal credentials from either social media platforms. Okay, that will combine another layer of security to provide PIN before you do your password uh, credentials, okay? So another okay, uh, capability is privilege identity management, okay? Move beyond password is another key area. So most of the time, some of our devices are capable on biometrics like facial recognition, uh, fingerprint recognition, okay? If you're using Windows 10, okay, let's say enterprise, you have your device guard, so you can use, let's say, PIN, okay? If you, your device is capable on biometrics as well, so you can use that, okay, to log in to your applications. And the last piece is how we help you monitor. So leak credentials reporting, okay, how do we use it, and how do we unlock that in your Office 365 is another um, key area and um, best practices that we can do um, in this situation. So I have here an example of one of our customer, Hearst. So in terms of the Active Directory, so they're using Azure AD to give each of their 20,000 employees okay, one identity and one password, which let, uh, let them provide simple, safeguarded access to network assets. So across business units, okay, They've used Azure as well to change the culture at Hertz. So they're getting people to look ahead and see IT as an enabler, not a barrier. So most of the time, okay, when we take a look, IT's responsibility, it focuses on number one, security, and second is compliance. And the, oftentimes, most of the IT is providing an outdated or old software. So some are office and some are on OS. So here in this example, they see IT okay, as an enabler, not a barrier. So we usually look at most of the time, all Office 365 users actually have their cloud identity, which is underlying under Azure. We call it Azure Active Directory. So we can use that okay, to again, help you protect and take a look at number one, multi-factor authentication, privilege identity management. You can also take a look on how we can go beyond passwords. So utilizing biometrics, okay, a scanner, or even pin on your mobile devices and Windows devices. And how do you help monitor using your admin center in Office 365? So before we go on the second um, core, let me check on the message box if we have questions. Conversations. Okay. So, so far we don't have any questions on identity and access management. So I guess um, I'll proceed with the second core, which is information protection. So um, for the attendees, please uh, feel free to chat on the message box on Teams. So if you have any questions, I'll take a look on that after each of the core or pillars on intelligent security. Okay. Uh, excuse me, question. Yes, sir. 
Sir Mike, hello. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, uh, regarding the multi-factor authentication, um, is it available in uh because we we have a, a license uh E three and uh, E one. Uh, will the multi-factor authentication available on those uh, license or for Office 365? Mm -hmm. So good question, uh, Sir Mike. So actually, uh, for the multi-factor authentication, yes, it's available on your current plan. So maybe um, I'll help um, you provide the link on how we can help you set up the multi-factor authentication for your Office 365. So basically what you will do is, um, you'll just need to log in on the admin center and we'll um, provide the steps on how we um, set up the multi-factor authentication. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, let us know if you need help for that so the account manager from Field Data will help you assist. Yes, I think uh, I'll contact them. I sir, just Thank you, sir, a question Mike. here. Yes, sir. Okay, so, uh, or uh, there's a recommendation also uh, for the benefit of everyone. Is it okay uh, while you are discussing, uh, while you are discussing to um, each uh, feature or security feature available, if you could identify which license uh, this is available with? Mm, okay. Because there are basic sure. premium and uh, those E3 one. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure, thank you, sir. So um, I'll add for that, um, so which will identify which plans uh, these are available. So in terms of the identity and access management, so um, basically for any plans that have email, OneDrive and SharePoint, and even Teams, um, so except business and um, Pro Plus. So we call it now, M365 business apps. So those two, except those two, um, you can have the identity and access management. So why number one? Uh, because here, when you look at uh, the uh, identity and access management, it protects for users to have a separate layer or an additional layer uh, for their emails, communication tools, and also um, your storage on the cloud. So let me take a look um, and share it with you. Uh, some service um, descriptions later on for each of the um, features and which it's capable and available on uh, on Office 365 or M365 plan. So I'll do that, um, sir, for the next um, core uh, or next identity security core um, here in the presentation. So we'll move now on the next core tenant in Microsoft's approach uh, to build in and not bolted on security. So which is information protection. So how do we help ensure documents and emails are seen only by authorized people? So for example, um, most of the time we're very active now on sharing files via OneDrive. So if you save, let's say uh, a file in OneDrive, so how do you now protect the users from gaining access on that OneDrive file that you've shared? So basically in OneDrive, um, if you go to the admin or if you go to each of the users OneDrive, for example, my Paul, uh, me, I have uh, my own OneDrive for business and even for personal. We have different set of um, information protection activities that we can use. So how do we protect the file is number one, whether we want to share it internally only so within our organization. So sharing internally, uh, we also have additional layer, which is if you want to just share it view only, or have an access to edit the file. Second is to the only people that you've mentioned to have an access to. So for example, I only shared my file to Rachel, which is my colleague. So when Rachel accidentally shared the file to somebody which is not applicable 
uh, to the information protection that I've set with that file, the recipient can't access the file. It just show unauthorized access, okay, if he or she opened the file. Third is an open share. So for example, I share it to Rachel, which is a view only, and then accidentally share, uh, Rachel shared it to another colleague of us, okay? The colleague or the recipient can have an access because it's an open, okay, shared access to everyone. But it's a view only, so they can just uh, view the file, but cannot edit the um, information inside. So this feature actually is available for all um, plans with OneDrive for Business. So let's go deep on information protection and see how companies okay, and organization is protecting their business. So here we have an estimate of around 90% um, of the world's data was generated in the last two years. And imagine we look and foresee that around 2025, there will be 163 zettabytes of data created and or replicated okay, within organizations. Even consumers also um, generates this um, with a total of 163 zettabytes. So imagine how large okay, our data centers um, providing their storage capacity for the users and comply on different security actions and precautions on securing their users. So closer to home is the statistic that on average worker use approximately 730 cloud applications to get work done. So here with these applications, how we can now help them, okay, secure the users. So some of us are using unauthorized or unmanaged applications. Some of us, again, uses unmanaged devices. So here, 80% of employees are using non-approved cloud applications uh, to get their work done. So most of the time during conversations, messaging, and even macro add-ons, most of the users are also using that and put it in different um, applications they, they use. So which means that they're unwittingly exposing their organization's valuable information to vulnerabilities. So um, what do we do and what are the tools in place to protect your data now with this scenario? So accessing multiple applications, which are unmanaged. So I have here an example. So we have Phil. Phil is trying to download a sensitive work document that this is stored in their cloud app. So, which is, is using an unmanaged device. So this is example, okay, let's say on your back end, okay, it will check number one, the role, okay, which is Phil's role, if he has an access or authorized access on the file that he wants to download. Second is, it will also check, okay, um, if Phil is also capable on downloading the file over the network, okay. It will also check group, client, and health if the device and also the file is healthy to be downloaded over the air. So, Another example is information about the incidents. So how do we now collect and see okay, how Phil downloaded the file over the network? So the incident is collected alongside data from firewalls and proxies and shared with IT for visibility. So providing ongoing risk assessment and analytics is available on Office 365. So you can look at he, uh, this option and activity uh, via the admin center on Office 365. So with Office 365, you can also take a look on multiple roles on providing admin uh, roles to your um, Office 365 tenant or environment. So you have, for example, the global admin. You can also um, 
provision a password admin you can also um, help delegated admin access rights to provide to some of your um, colleagues to take a look on your admin uh, center from time to time so if there are any health issues um, application vulnerability um, if you want also to check okay your users log ins okay like for example they log in here in mandaluyong philippines and then you want also to check okay the logins from other countries okay so <clears throat> later on i'll share it with you um some of the features or we call it uh, functionalities over the office 365 and where it is available on uh, on the plan side So we have here an example. Um, so from a, a customer who embraced okay, information uh, protection. So teams across different divisions and different countries can now easily build and safely store and share documents. In the past, there was nothing comparable. So in this example, what they utilize is they all access uh, files from OneDrive for personal use. And another layer of storage that they utilize is SharePoint. So on SharePoint, they've created different um, sites and contents that disseminate information such as number one, calendar for their events. Second is um, they've created SharePoint list for all of the um, projects and activities that they have. For the IT teams, they've also created an application on top of SharePoint wherein all of the materials uh, and also device refresh is available over the SharePoint list. So in this example, uh, what they did is to utilize some security layer um, features on, let's say, on Office 365 and even on SharePoint. So one key advantage is to focus on how you create your policies, okay, internal uh, for downloading contents. So OneDrive uh, already providing this. So if you want to share the file to a certain user, if it's an open share link, you can have another layer to block download uh, for, for that certain file. So they can just view it only, uh, online only. But if they want to have a copy, they need to ask permission from the creator. So you can have that as well. So that feature is available for all um, plans with Office 365 OneDrive for Business. So um, even SharePoint, you have the capability to also see how you want to manage and share documents. So same with OneDrive. You can have a layer, whether it's a view only or can be edited from different um, users, internal or even external. Um, take note that on SharePoint, if you've created sites, um, you can also manage how your members can be um, using the SharePoint site. So whether they just log in and view all the information but not accessing the documents on SharePoint. And also um, in OneDrive, for example, if you want to view the history of all your edits, you can have the version history okay, on your OneDrive for Business. So you can see who edited the file. So you can see I edited, um, let's say, on the first instance. And then my colleague edited um, on the second paragraph. And if you want to revert it back, you can also do that um, using the version history. So that applies to one, your Word documents, your PowerPoint presentation, your Excel spreadsheets, uh, and even on um, other applications on Office. So let me check where are you using is this part of Office 365? Okay, so we have here a question from Ms. Miriam. So Microsoft Teams 
is um, available on Office 365 plans with um, number one, uh, we call it Office 365 or Microsoft 365 um, standard. So before we call it business essentials, another plan is uh, you will get Teams on Microsoft 365 um, basic. So ah, basic is business essential, sorry for that. Um, and then uh, we also have Microsoft 365 business premium. So that's the Microsoft 365 business before. So you'll get Microsoft Teams. And even the enterprise plans, uh, you will get Microsoft Teams uh, and utilize it for your communication uh, activities. So you can also ask, so for example, you want to have a trial on Microsoft Teams, you can ask your account managers from Field Data uh, <clears throat> to provide you free trial on Microsoft Teams if you want to assess and use it uh, in today's COVID situation. Uh, Microsoft Teams is uh, applies for a free trial uh, for a month for you. What's the difference between Microsoft Teams and Skype for Business? Okay, so Skype for Business, actually Microsoft Teams now is the new Skype for Business. So if you uh, have already a subscriber on Office 365 way back, let's say 2014, um, here uh, most of the users, uh, they've actually utilize Skype for Business for communication. But now Microsoft Teams uh, for new Office 365 users are now um, out of the box. We'll use Microsoft Teams for collaboration and communication. So it replaced uh, somewhat Skype for Business on Office 365 plans, but giving you more functionalities and capabilities, which one of the favorite feature that I have is the unifying your applications within Office 365 and even third-party apps within your Microsoft Teams environment. But functionality-wise, like the um, Skype for Business broadcast is available under Teams Live. Video conferencing, such as what we are doing right now, uh, which is available in Skype for Business, is also available in Teams. So it replaced uh, Skype for Business, but giving you more functionalities. So thanks for that question, Miss Miriam. Okay, so I think there are no other um, questions. Okay. So maybe let's proceed on the third um, core tenant in Microsoft's approach uh, to built in and not bolted on security, so which is threat protection. So the threat landscape has become increasingly complex, so which means that some organizations must be constantly on high alert to protect, detect, and remediate against them. So for example, Microsoft has found that 50,000 corporate identities are attacked every month. So given this trend, organizations must assume a posture of breach. So uh, they should also assume that no matter how simplistic an attack's origin, example, um, one successful phish attempt on one user, so that attacks is likely uh, polymorphic. So meaning that the attack can change its own code to avoid detection. So earlier we've mentioned that even threats are evolving. So as a result, 
what initially looks like an isolated attack can compromise an organization's entire network in less than two days. So attacks will unfortunately only get smarter, more strategic, and more pointed, which means that organizations must empower their IT teams uh, or their security operations team with an integrated platform approach to help them protect, second is detect, and remediate against attack faster. So here's an example of a trend that Microsoft has noticed over the last 12 months. So as threat detection and remediation solution get smarter, attackers are reverting back to deploy classic cyber attacks like phishing. So in this example, um, one of the activities is how our security platform leverage advanced intelligence and automation to protect end users and their organization. So Ellen here, as an example, is an employee who receive an email that appears safe. Perhaps um, if you can take a look on the email, the formatting and overall look and feel suggests um, to Ellen, which is the user, that it comes from a trusted source. So sometimes phishing um, underlies on banks. So most of us receives a lot of email. We also see a lot of um, posts in social media um, alarming us um, in the COVID situation that some attackers are doing and pushing their attacks and activities right now, um, evolving and using different um, phishing emails to collect information from different users. So in this scenario, it's the same. So you can see that from that email, okay, it's from a trusted source or even from your organization. So Ellen, Okay, clicks the link within the email. So unwittingly letting um, the malware into the organization's network. So typically, okay, an organization would not discover this breach for a median of 99 days. So another example here is with Microsoft's advanced threat protection capability. So threat protection, uh, to help you um, see where it's available. Uh, it's available currently in E5, but you can also have an add-on to any um, plans that you have currently if you want the threat protection capability. So most of the time, um, uh, if you want to utilize some security features, um, if not available, you can have it as an add-on. So in this example, threat protection is available in E5, but you can also get it as an add-on to your current plan. So current plans such as BE, Business Essentials, Business Premium, F1 or Frontline 1, uh, E1, okay, E3, and um, some standalone plans like um, Exchange Online Plan 2, uh, you can have the threat protection capabilities as an add-on. So the threat protection capabilities, uh, what it does is the organization security admin can learn of the breach faster and even receive recommendations from Microsoft for remediation. So um, she can let Microsoft advance threat protection to do the work. So what you can do is you can just go over the admin center, okay, and um, go to the threat protection capabilities and ask somebody from Microsoft, which is a Microsoft engineer for security um, breaches. So what they do is with the um, help of artificial intelligence and machine learning, they will help detect and remediate vulnerabilities on its own. So which is one of the, um, best practices that um, some of the companies are utilizing now to see and have a remedi remediation activities for phishing attacks. 
So another example here is we have a customer, okay, like fruit of the loom. So the key takeaway here is that um, every company now is also a technology company and must have security top of mind. So with fruit of the loom, um, they shared the experience wherein they see the security landscape evolving with more sophisticated attacks. So they trusted the platform to stay ahead of the latest threat to protect their data and, and their, their network. So um, another example for this is um, your um, information protection and data loss protection. So um, Azure Information Protection is available as an add-on uh, to any Office 365 um, plans. So what it does is, um, in line with the DLP or data loss protection, if I have an email, let's say it's a confidential information, this is um, for protecting the users and the file itself. Um, this example will give you, number one, if you have the policy in place, let's say do not forward policy. What it does is as a confidential information under DLP, it marks as confidential. So you have watermarks that is confidential. Let's say credit card information is one, and it should be sent through, let's say from the, to the HR department, assigned to just one person okay, from the HR. So with this policy of do not forward and the DLP for the confidential information, what it does is all features that will give you accessibility to forward. So like forward, print, save as, save, even screenshot, Okay, is not applicable for that. So you cannot do those things if there are policy in place uh, underlying the information protection that you have under Azure. So either um, third party snipping tool is also not applicable. So what you can all, uh, always see is a black screen if you do so. Even the copy paste functionality from that message or from that email is not available as well. So again, um, if you want to do to have that functionality, it's available in E5, uh, but you can have that as an add-on security in your plans, uh, current plans. So we have a um, question here. Is the file versioning feature in OneDrive also applicable to non-Office files, such as AutoCAD drawings? Okay, so um, let me take a look on that. Um, for example, you have third-party non-Office um, application and you want to share that uh, with somebody. So let me check, um, let's say on the AutoCAD on how we can um, prevent uh, sharing files. Okay, so it applies as well. So how you want to share with somebody. So it gives you um, the same four functionality. So share with anyone with the link, share within your organization, share with existing access and share with the specific people. So even you have um, different um, application uh, or file format from your OneDrive for business. Is there a limit in terms of number of participants? Okay, so for Microsoft Teams, if we're doing the same, the video conference call, it can hold up to 250 participants. But if you want to have more, let's say a town hall meeting, okay, what I suggest is you go with Microsoft Live. It can hold up to 10,000 people. So we have another question. What are the security tools that is embedded on Office 365 that we can use to add protection in your organization? Okay, so out of the box, okay, 
um, security layers such as, for example, on email, you have the um, anti-spam and anti-malware. Um, second is um, all of your connections is encrypted at rest or in transit. Um, third is, um, I suggest if you are on a business essentials platform or even um, E1 uh, and BP, business premium, that focuses on collaborating using Teams uh, and even email, I suggest you ask the um, your account managers to give you um, information about advanced threat protection or ATP. So that will give you another um, good layer for security for your current plan, uh, business plans or business family plans. So um, advanced threat protection is the same um, uh, with, with the previous um, functionality. Uh, it's an add-on for your plan. So what it does is, Okay, so for any Office 365, um, it also provides you, number one, threat protection policy. So meaning uh, it can help you define the policies uh, set to, let's say, different levels uh, on your organization. So second is your reports. So it gives you real-time report to monitor the advanced threat protection performance within your organization. Third is um, investigation and response capability. And last is um, automated investigation and response capability. So um, take note that ATP is an add-on. So, um, but out of the box for Office 365, um, depends on the plan, but for business family plans, again, you have the uh, encryptions, uh, anti-spam and anti-malware. Uh, you also have different layers on secure, securing the files from the information protection under Azure um, Identity Kit. And for um, your admin center, okay, uh, you can have your policies that takes place for each of the applications that you use. So you have Teams, SharePoint, OneDrive, and other online capabilities as well. As well. So if you take a look on the admin center as well, you can see the Microsoft um, security. Uh, what it does is you can also check if you're um, <clears throat> capable on uh, number one, you can see the health, um, issues for each of the applications that you use. Second is for GDPR compliance. So you can also assess okay, um, your applications uh, for under the GDPR. Another um, is for the uh, activities okay, around the world from uh, if there are current attacks that are happening. So you can also see that. And you can also download reports okay, under the admin center uh, for any okay, app, uh, activities and anomalies from, from your users. So let's move on the next okay, um, core, which is the last um, core for intelligence security, which is security management. So here, how we can now gain visibility and control over security tools. So I have here, okay, As an example, how security operations uh, be modernized in this current situation. So when we discuss security management, we mean that um, the way in which security operations functions inside an organization and 
to be honest, security operations must be modernized nowadays. So here in this example, um, this is not the fault of the IT. So given the phase of change and acceleration in cybersecurity landscape, your IT team is operating at more than 100% capacity. So they are maxed out and are being forced to do more with less. So what can do is executive leadership must also face the problems, a traditional patchwork approach to security. So for example, um, it is unrealistic to, an expect, to expect an IT security team to coordinate 75 inputs. So it's no wonder then that 75% of organizations report having um, difficulty managing endpoint risk. So the capacity issues that point solution approaches to security um, create force your IT team to prioritize which attacks to defend and remediate. So and which attacks to let faster in your IT environment. So creating enormous risk to your infrastructure, your data and your business success. So for example, um, one in five organizations lose customer due to an attack and nearly 30% lost revenue. So here, okay, we've seen the following example um, as a best practice. So illustrated uh, on your screen as um, before and after. So the scenario is for security operations, and security management within orga organizations optimized for security through a built-in platform approach. So for example, I have here Ryan. So Ryan is the security manager for his organization. So Ryan, typically, um, he navigate and somehow coordinate across 75 unique security endpoints which makes it difficult for him to effectively and confidently respond to the increasing complex, uh, complex threats facing the organization. So as shown uh, here, Ryan must therefore decide which 56% of cybersecurity alerts to investigate on a given day. So leaving the other 44% unattended, this is sub um, optimal for Ryan and for the organization. So with the integrated okay, platform-driven approach to security that your Microsoft 365 um, is providing, Ryan and his team are now able to leverage Microsoft, uh, which they offer the artificial intelligence and machine learning-driven intelligence across any Office 365 applications that you use so from the information, from the device manage, from the data that you stored, whether in, in um, OneDrive, SharePoint, uh, and other um, storage capacity. And to work with the technology, um, Microsoft will give you um, the capability to protect and also detect and remediate within your organization. So here, Okay, we also have um, available a capability in Office 365 under your admin center, which gives you Microsoft Secure Score. So Microsoft Secure Score is a feature which helps organizations understand their security positions and provide advance or advice, okay, on what controls to potentially enables to make them safer. So Microsoft Secure Score, which now compromises Office 365 Score and Windows Security Score. So let's say you have your M365 full stack. So you have your Windows Defender ATP. So it also gives you the Windows Secure Score. But if you're only utilizing Office 365 um, and have the Security Score, it will give you um, scope within Office 365. So with this feature, it also allows organization to compare their level of security to other organization. So it understands where they currently stand on security. 
And second, the tactical steps that they can take along their security journey for increased protection. So I think later on, after the session, I'll give some um, key takeaways, um, some information where we can look at uh, some examples, uh, more examples uh, rather uh, on this typical um, feature. So again, the secure score is available under the ATP. So ATP is available as an add-on for um, plans for business family um, on Office 365. So we have here A6, okay? So A6 is, uh, it's a brand for shoes. So we know that they focus on, uh, way back they focus on shoes, but now they also focus on technology that applies on shoes. So today um, they trusted the enterprise mobility and security that runs under their devices for Surface. Okay, that runs Windows 10 platform that helps them protect their data, such as their proprietary running shoes designs. Okay, and um, second is that on EMS or Enterprise Mobility Plus Security, you will gain an access on how you um, help secure the mobile devices and even. Um, third-party devices that you have within your organization. So it gives you one, we call it Intune for mobile device management. So um, Intune, it gives you capability like how do you manage and create secured environment for your um, users, um, designating what is for uh, environment under your organization versus environment for their personal. So Intune will also let you uh, manage the device. For example, a company who have multiple uh, mobile phones given to multiple um, employees, what the um, IT team wants to is to also manage those um, devices. So management in terms of what are the applications installed on that device, Second is restricting the downloadable applications from the App Store or Google Store. Third is if they are not, um, let's say, they want to check the location from time to time. Uh, it's also applicable on the Intune. Uh, another capability is you can remote wipe the device. For example, it was stolen or you're missing the device. Okay. So the IT team can do remote um, wipe under the Intune capability. So here, if you need the mobile device management, okay, from different device form factors you have from small, medium to large screen devices, I suggest you can take a look on having uh, the EMS piece uh, on top of your Office 365. But take note that if you're worried on this add-on plans, okay, you can take a look on Microsoft 365 Business Premium for a more premium suitable solution for this situation. So what it does is it gives you capability to upgrade to Windows 10. Second is it will give you the full stack of business family um, on Office 365. So it gives you the installer, the online capabilities. Third is it gives you this best of security functionality of Microsoft 365. So Microsoft 365 Business Premium, okay, before we call it Microsoft 365 Business, it gives you three products or solutions. So security, your operating system, and your Office 365. So, but if you need an add-on, okay, it's also available, uh, an add-on plan for any um, Office 365 plan, okay, and even standalone, okay, for the advanced threat protection and even EMS. 
So if you need the mobile device management, Intune is also available as an add-on. So now that we've walked through the four core tenants, underscoring Microsoft's approach to intelligent security, it's also important to note that you as an organization can create your own security strategy with our platform and give the strategy superpower by tapping into our intelligence. So our intelligence is the foundation of security platform and is intelligence that you cannot get anywhere, uh, anywhere else. So this intelligence piece is applies to different applications across Office 365. It also applies to any other platform outside Office 365 like Azure Dynamics. Okay. So we've tackled okay, these four core pillars under security, which is identity and access management, information protection, security management, and threat protection. So in this um, bolt in and not bolted on, okay, so we've seen um, different examples on how companies and organizations supporting the new normal. And we've also seen a lot of functionalities that I've mentioned. One is for prevention of unauthorized access, what we can do is to align and um, take a look on MFA or multi-factor authentication, which number one helps increase authentication assurance. So we recommend requiring it for all users. So if you are not ready to deploy to all users, um, consider entering an emergency pilot for higher risk or more targeted users. So you can take a look on Azure Active Directory so for the conditional access to enforce MFA. So second is control of unauthorized or authorized users access. So this will help you ensure that only registered devices that comply with your orga organization security policies can access your environment. So this will help you reduce the risk that would be uh, posed by resident malware or intruders. So this is also applicable and lies under the Azure Active Directory conditional access. So this will enforce device health requirements. So to further increase your level of assurance, you can evaluate okay, um, your users and sign in on risks to block or restrict risky users access. So you may also want to prevent your users from accessing other orga organizations instances of the Office 365 applications. So if you do this with Azure AD tenant restrictions, only log on traffic needs to traverse the virtual um, private network. So um, third application or feature that I've mentioned earlier is DLP, data loss protection or prevention. So this will help your organization prevent the accident, uh, accidental disclosure of sensitive information. So Office 365 has a rich set of built-in tools. So you can use the built-in DLP capabilities of let's say Teams and SharePoint to detect, um, let's say inappropriate stored or shared, in, uh, shared sensitive information. So um, if, Part of your remote work strategy involves your, um, let's say, BYOD or bring your own device policy. You can use conditional access app control to prevent sensitive data from being downloaded to users' um, personal device. So maybe um, I think what we can do, because um, most of you are asking if this um, application or feature is available on your existing plan, Maybe I'll um, send or create a table for you later after this um, discussion to provide which plan is already um, capable to do this and which plan uh, doesn't have this functionality feature um, like the uh, DLP, ATP, so which is add-on and which is uh, all already embedded. 
So to help you um, see uh, and um, check whether this is um, already within your Office 365. And then um, also we've talked about malware detection. So um, in Office 365, you have anti-malware and spam within your email SharePoint. So by default, automatically scan file uploads from known malware. So you can also enable exchange online protection okay, to scan email messages for malware. So if your, um, let's say Office 365 subscription includes ATP or you've um, recently purchased advanced threat protection as an add-on, uh, I suggest you enable it to provide advanced protection against malware as well. So if you also have the, um, the other ATP, which is we call it Microsoft Defender ATP, for your endpoint protection, meaning on the device itself that runs Windows. Um, here, what you can do is you can also have another layer of security that now focuses on endpoints. So take note that each um, users for the Windows Defender ATP is licensed for up to five company managed devices. So it's also very useful for, um, for you. So for any small to medium corporate, so if you want to take a look and get the whole stack um, of best functionalities on security, I suggest um, you can take a look on the Microsoft uh, 365 Business Premium before we call it Microsoft 365 Business. So again, you'll get three um, solutions, upgrade operating system, uh, Office 365, and also the advanced um, and best of in June. Okay. So here I'll I want to show you as well um, that in terms of the intelligence within Microsoft platform, so how Microsoft is very focused on driving security as well not just purely on Office 365, but also on other cloud solutions and even devices that they have. So here, um, Microsoft have intelligent security graph, uh, which is, to be honest, it's truly unique. So it pulls from the vast amount of data that Microsoft analyzes and learn and get smarter as it helps our security platform detect and remediate cyber attacks. So um, I'm not sure if you've remembered the attacks before. I think that was four years ago or yeah, four years ago. Um, some attackers attacks the, um, let's say from, from another platform, uh, the Sony for the PS4 uh, users. And the next day they attack um, Xbox. So with this situation, um, Microsoft learns a lot from different activities. So they, they've created a, a, a platform wherein we call it the Advanced um, Intelligence Security Graph, which learns every single day um, different anomalies, activities from different cross platforms on, within Microsoft. So security and productivity solution is also one of the uh, links within intelligent security graph, which allows um, users to get more secured environment uh, and how Microsoft protects larger companies and even their data sets from, uh, from hosted private and public cloud within Microsoft uh, platform or stack. So, to share with you, um, we also have top security companies which are currently partnering with Microsoft to defend against increasing sophisticated, uh, fast moving threat. So we have here, um, I'm, I'm sure some of you are familiar with um, Checkpoint, F5, Palo Alto. These are companies who are currently partnering with Microsoft as well. Uh, to help us defend against um, this threat. 
So I'll include um, after the session some key takeaways, uh, some information about um, different associations as well that partners with Microsoft to help secure your environment and the applications that you use from the network to the users, to the application, to the endpoint, so from your devices. So here, okay, I have the, uh, I also want to share Microsoft's um, Digital Crimes Unit. So they are the one who is leading the fight against cyber crime. Um, they have two different teams. So they have red team and blue team. So what they are doing is they are doing some investigations, forensics and analytics with the power of um, different cross platforms that they use using intelligent graph. They also um, utilize machine learning, AI and data visualization. They also um, do public and private partnerships from different organizations, focuses on security, and creative um, legal standing as well. So with this, okay, uh, Microsoft 365, okay, unites productivity and security, which uh, if not, okay, some of the features can be added as an add-on or you start um, checking how Microsoft 365 can help you unlock those three products and services. So upgrade operating system, Office 365, and you have your best security applications. So uh, as promised, I'll share and create a table for you to see um, different plans, which security applications uh, is already embedded, or uh, you can have it as an add-on. So it's a great request um, from, from the audience. Uh, so that you can have a look uh, if you already have this, or if not, you can plan out how you want to roll this out. So we are very happy um, to help you um, to roll out these security functionalities within your Office 365 environment. So let your um, just let us know or approach your account managers to uh, to help you with. Uh, let's say earlier we have um, requests to how uh, we can use and activate MFA, multi-factor authentication. So um, we'll help you on that as well. And for Microsoft Teams question, so just let us know if you have um, questions on uh, the platforms and tools that you use, uh, how we can further utilize, let's say from Teams, how do we now use Planner? How do we can integrate your SharePoint um, sites and contents on teams so how we can do automations okay on office 365 so just let us know if you want to explore those as well okay so i think um i'll open the meeting chat uh, if there are any questions and then um let's move with um laylord's um q a portion uh, after we answer those questions. So meeting chat. So limit, we already answered. Security tools embedded, okay. So any other questions? Mm -hmm. So we have here a request from Sir um, Rolando. So sure, um, we'll um, send best practices um, and guide. So for security tools, I also um, I will also share um, because I've uh, encountered I think a week ago uh, a user of Office three six five have a breach. So uh, I also share best practices how to, let's say, remediate on this type of um, situation. Well, 
welcome, sir. So we have a uh, new question. So from Archie. So how can we mitigate or eliminate uh, phishing emails from Exchange Online? Okay. So let me have the slide back. Oh, there. Okay. Sorry about that. So, um, in terms of the question, so here we have, um, how do we eliminate the intrusion of phishing emails, uh, in Exchange Online? So, um, phishing, uh, is a malicious attack. So, what we can do is, um, in the admin center, so admin .microsoft.com. So, what you can do is you can go to security and then threat management, and then there is policy. Then um, you can have the ATP, Advanced Threat Protection, Anti-Phishing. So um, in the admin center, you can also uh, see a default policy, so you can refine it. So um, again, for the phishing, I suggest um, to add a new security um, layer, uh, you can look at the advanced threat protection uh, that can be on top of uh, your, let's say, business essentials or business premium or even E1 uh, to help you protect against um, anti-phishing. So I think um, what we can also do is I'll include on the key takeaway how we can um, utilize advanced threat protection because most of the uh, questions are um, underlying advanced threat protection. So I'll give you more details on that and then we can have um, maybe a different one-on-one um, uh, -on -one session for for the ATP So I also remembered um, for for the um, added security. So earlier I mentioned EOP, Exchange Online Protection. So it's uh, it applies on uh, your plan, current plan B E B P E one E three E five. So these are um, any plans without ATP. So EOP, Exchange Online Protection. Uh, contains the feature that can help you protect 
uh, from phishing as well. So it gives you, um, if I remembered correctly, uh, it has it it has the default anti phishing policy. So what it does is um, it turns spoof intelligence on or off. So um, it gives you unauthenticated sender identification in Outlook on and off, on or off, okay, and um, specific actions to block the spoofed senders. So usually they move to junk folder or it will go to the quarantine. So I think if there are no other questions, um, I'll give the remaining time to Laylord to have um, the exciting activities that um, he's, uh, he's going to provide for us. I'll stay online to check um, from time to time the chat um, meeting here if you have questions. 